Hi everyone. Uh, this is myself Vibhor Mittal, and uh, so welcome you all. So in this session, uh, this is the first musically your session, and uh, today we have our winner, Mr. Parasit. So Paras uh, will be joining us live, and he will be showcasing his entry in the musically your session. So basically, this session was to bring out your musical love. how music impacts you you have to build an app for it or any other existing app you have to modify that and uh, bring your functionality in this so without miss wasting any much time further here is paras so paras uh, please join in yes yes so vivor can you hear me Yes, Paras, you are live now. So okay. Please. Hello, say. everyone. Uh, so my name is Paras, and uh, as ma ma many of you might know, I am from Antrack. So first of all, I would like to thank Akshit Jain, Google, and Udacity for providing me this opportunity, and also very, very much thanks to Vibhor Mittal for organizing this challenge. for all of us and it was pretty amazing to work on this and along with this i don't uh, wanna waste time on introductions or whatever uh, and i will get to the point right away so i think i should start sharing my screen now Okay, yeah. guys. We can uh, see your screen. Yes. It's yes. Fine. So we are live now. Yes. So uh, Vibhor introduced the challenge very well. So I don't think I need to repeat that again. So first of all, I think I should showcase uh, my app. Uh, so I have the emulator open up. So here you can uh, just check out. Uh, this is my app. So first of all, let's run it and. Uh, this is the app so till now it just looks plain and simple but yeah as uh, we were told me to insert an easter egg uh, so there is an easter egg so let us see first what the app will do so see this is five marked here so i am going to uh, so press it again and again so see okay i have pressed it but the counter is going back okay that is why i have written here tap the number below quickly so i need to click it quickly only to reveal the easter egg so what is going on in the background i have used i have used a handler here as you can see this this is a handler here so what i am doing that each second each second i am incrementing the value of this variable by 1 until it reaches 5 now so now it is stable so i am decreasing it again and it is going back until 5 so what is the point here i need to reveal my thoughts on my um, my music test but with an easter egg so i handler is uh, getting so much useful here so just now to give you a quick demo uh, let me just uh, reveal the secret here so this is what will be shown after the easter egg is revealed okay so what is going on actually so what is going on here as you can see lots of code and uh, some bad practices just as uh, android developers follow so i had uh, made this in uh, nahari so let's get over quickly so you can see a handler object so i will go to the declaration here by pressing control and uh, click that so i have declared a handler here so what handler is doing handler handler is doing the work of scheduling scheduling a job okay so where i have used it uh, i have used it here i just uh, press and hold uh, control button and then click on this to see the usages so i can see these are the usages at these line numbers uh, so i think i have uh, defined it here so it is a new handler this thing the looper dot get main prepare 
sorry get main looper is uh, used to tell it that it will run on main main thread so basically i have i am running an errorable so this function what will this do this will decrease the value this is that value which we saw in the counter so just to show you again let me run that back so that will uh, sorry not actually decrease <laughs> yes that's uh, pretty bad of me so that actually increases the value so what it is doing that is th this is running this runnable so runnable uh, means pretty basically just to run an action in the background you, we usually run that although we are running it on main thread for this purpose so this is a pretty basic basic code boilerplate code i think i should say to decrease the value so why i have used this run on ui thread inside that because for the m counter which is a text view as you can see here which is a text view uh, we are setting the text and we can't do that from another thread we need to be in the ui thread that is why i am using run on ui thread so uh, this code is being executed after each second how do i know if it is being executed after each second this this implies so this is what means 1 second or 1000 milliseconds so if i need to create another handler so creating an handler is easy i define a, an object like this and to schedule a task we use the post delayed function here so this requires a runnable and a long delay millisecond so in place of runnable i am using new runnable we can define that above just like i did here you can define it here or otherwise here so how android studio is helping us see i am just running uh, sorry typing new runnable okay and pressing tab and there we go it is uh, writing all the code on behalf of us so here i enter the comma and give it the seconds for suppose we need to uh, schedule the task after 2 seconds so i will write here 2000 so in android world at many times we need to schedule some task after each second after each 2 seconds for example if we get some network error while we are getting a, a json for some of our, some of our app uh, we might need to reschedule that to refetch the data after 10 second or just suppose we have a new app so we have a new app and uh, this needs to refresh after each second sorry it's not sorry uh, each second but after each minute so we can schedule that task using a handler so that this is uh, pretty much going sorry i'm late in showing the agenda so this is going to be our agenda and i am just taking the first step walk through of my app musically yours showing the use of handler so <clears throat> basically i think the use of handler this is the main use case and uh, should be pretty much clear here now i am getting back quickly to see the ui let us see the ui and it seems pretty simple right away but uh, there are some uh, nifty tricks to make it visually appealing how you can see this this is the status bar which is transparent this is the navigation bar which is also transparent and this is the toolbar which is also transparent so how is this uh, going to affect it yes this does affect the ux so if this was not transparent it would have been a solid color which might not look as good and if you are an android developer from some time you might know that making a toolbar transparent or status bar transparent is a, a not so easy task you need to support many uh, oss and do different styling and whatever stock stack overflow is uh, just filled with that so i am sharing here quick methods to do that see first for toolbar so this is the toolbar and uh, let us say how to make that transparent initially it was not transparent so there is just one line of code let us see this is our activity main 
okay activity main this is showing the preview this is the toolbar so what i have done this is the one line code see the toolbar is placed inside app bar layout so everything should be applied to app bar layout so here is background and i have set it to transparent if you create a new toolbar or new app bar layout this uh, line will, won't be present here so see this this is the de default uh, toolbar color so if, if i need to set it to transparent there is no way to hack around or something just use this at android colon color slash transparent that's it uh, so this seems very simple but initially i messed up here and there on stack overflow uh, and many hacks for different api levels so getting back from here toolbar to status bar so for status bar and navigation bar what i am using here let us see in the code so these two or three lines of code is the main actually it uh, was uh, made simple after some api level initially it was not that simple so what we are doing here we are de uh, declaring a window object w which gets our own window this window this complete window okay so it gets the window and set flags set flags what does it do and you might have seen this set flags many times uh, you mainly in intents so set flags what it is telling i am setting these flags same they same both are same so this is to tell android that make the stats bar and navigation bar as no limits you can see here no limits these flags are more than enough to make both of these transparent so again i am repeating initially in older versions it was not that easy and uh, now it has been made so much easy and i am happy that uh, without writing much code or doing hacking here and there in styles uh, i can do this very much easily so we have covered these topics so uh, let us see just uh, to see this here now i am going to explain you just one line of code again let me see where i put that i think in content main dot xml which hosts the whole ui here it is so whenever you are using constraint layout see you uh, as you are android developer uh, you know the constraint layout is the hot and trending topic here so i have used this line okay what does this do as the name states animate layout changes to true this is just a one line of code but constraint layout handles it so well that it automatically displays appropriate animations so i it, i think uh, i won't be able to see the animation but let me try as this is emulator so and uh, see notice the animation will be shown as soon as the uh, picture of sardar ji comes up here up here around so you might you may or may not uh, notice the animation but stay focused okay, here and oh um, animation might not be visible here but on actual devices this line of code helps in pretty much uh, animating the normal views so always try to use this so it will give a smooth animation on many uh, android defined views okay so i think i should show the constraint layout uh, blueprint here also so pretty much simple nothing nothing much and see this blueprint which is always helpful to see it's better than the main print so here i have set the margins and set it to margin to pack 16 and this is this is how the link uh, the views are linked so i don't think i need to go deep inside that so i think i need to review what's left in this so this app is pretty much covered i think so even if after this any doubts are left i i will be happy i will be happy to 
take your doubts you can dm me on slack or post me any tag you can even dm me both regarding this so i have used main some some of the easy and interesting concepts are there oh sorry just uh, i think i remember one concept is there so this is the gif see this is the gif so loading gifs in android you need to use a library i think i have you we need to use glide so how to use glide glide is an external library many of you might know this uh, so i need to type it to get its dependency so if you search for glide you can see here that it load and in the gradle i am not uh, getting deep here in the gradle you can uh, put these these two lines to use the glide and i think i need to show you right away where i have used it the other code you can see here is just uh, the logic code and uh, doesn't need to be explained it just uh, tells android when to show the easter egg or when not so the main thing is here, here glide dot with dot this so let me in go step by step glide okay this class is provided by the external library so with with the i think con i need to pass the context here which is uh, this and after that i need to load what to load the gif where the gif is placed it is placed in drawable folder you can even put the url of the gif here so this is the name of my uh, gif file so where to load so that is specified by into so where to load in the in an image view what is that image view that image view is and uh, this this is the name of my image view as you can see so this is pretty much does the task so i think uh, we should move to the next agenda uh, right here so along with this app i am going around another of my app pdf pinner so let me show you what it does first so that we can explore that easily yeah so this is the app this is was my original idea so another topic was here how to get an apps idea usually many developers uh, work on different uh, frameworks and technologies and after learning them they say they ha don't have any idea to work on work on websites work on apps software programs so how do we get an idea i am sharing my personal views here uh, how i get the idea i am somewhat lucky i should say here that uh, i often get ideas whenever i need them so i have three apps in the play store so how i got the idea i was as soon as i learned android development i was facing some issues in my real life so what was the issue this was around my university uh, so to solve that i immediately Im sorry immediately thought of an app somehow that kind of that thing kind of stuck in my mind and i got the idea so you don't need to think so much on an idea life gives you ideas automatically this is my main app in the play store and this was also an idea as a student you uh, might need to in the pdf files students often uh, i think uh, students often use the pdf files with question paper syllabus notices so pdf is the one of the most used i think i should say uh, extension file uh, so in the mobile app you need to open that pdf how do you open you open adobe acrobat or you open file explorer and then locate the file i needed to simplify this task first of all i saw in play store that there was no such app available to shorten the task so i searched on google how to achieve this so immediately that made my own idea so this is the app as you can see what this does is it receives the files and pin them to home screen for easy access the file is pinned on your home screen and you can open the file right away just with one tap so let us see what it is going around here so in this app we pick choose files this is the dialog which shows all the available pdf files here 
I have two PD files. So I select one, two, or many ones. How many we can select? Suppose we select both of them. This is the file picker di dialog. And after choosing the I click done. Okay, that is done. So now what has happened? This is like an image button. Mm -hmm. has loaded the files here and asked me to choose the icon. So I am pressing pin file. So yes, it has prompted me to add automatically to the next file. So this will be the next file. Yeah. I have pinned. So let us see. Yes, the files have been pinned here as you can see. And I can access them on just one click. But unfortunately, I don't have a PDF reader installed in this. So, but if you had, you can open this right away. So, I am just taking the overview. What's going on inside it? So, this is the overview. Ask users for permission. How? How? Let us see. Let me close this app first and open it. I have reopened it. As soon as you choose, you click the choose files button. You need to access the system files, but you need permission for that also. So Android requires from Android 6.0 no, to get the permission from user. So as you click the choose files button, it is not asking for permission now because I have granted it. So asking for permission is just a boilerplate code as you can the PDF printer code. So, if I can show you this is the permission, the boilerplate code. I don't think I need to go deep in thank it. So, this uh, the, sorry, this asks the system for permission, and when granted, it executes the function. So, this was our first task: ask user for permission. After that, retrieve data from file picker dialog. So. What happens now in the email enter? If file picker is now open. Now, user selects as many as files he wants. So after pressing done, the data should be received. The data should be retrieved. So in the code, let us see what is going on. This is the function choose PDF. So I am using an external library there for the picker. Yes. I don't think I need to reinvent the wheel to create it and dialogue and use that. We can use directly an external library. So what it is doing, it is doing the instance of that and dot add files for. So what we need to fetch only the PDF files. And this PDF gives the extension array. So for now I have only one file extension which is dot PDF, but we can choose multiple here. And I am just setting some themes. Doc sport is false. En enable select all to true and dot pick file with the context. So, what this code does, this will open up this. I just press choose files. This will open up this dialog. Okay. Now, after pressing done, I need to retrieve this data. How do I retrieve? As soon as I press done, this activity will be finished. So after this will be finished, the code here, which is, let me see, yes, on activity result, this will be executed. As you can see here, right away, the doc paths is an array list, and I will add all the files here with using the data. Data will return all the in, uh, Data is an intent which returns the data here, and I am extracting my data, which is the key selected docs. This will add all the, the path of the files to this array list. Right. So I have now the path of the files. Now, um, just let us see again extract path and name of files and pass the data to recycler. This is our third step. So what is going on now? I press them. And as you can see, the system is pinning here them to a recycler. So 
this data is being passed, but how? How I am extracting the path and name of the fault? So how does this value returns a path? This is the format of the path. So this is how somewhat suppose some random file is selected and this is the path returned by the value. So I am using a loop just forget it that it is here for a while. So string path will be the from array list dot get i. So this will return the path overall path. So so the path variable will contains this complete. So we, this will be used to open the desired file. But how do we extract the name from here? So to extract the name, I am creating a new variable. Name. And from the path, we are using a substring method. So as you can see, this is the name of the file, which is to be shown on the home screen. So I, how I am approaching to get this name? To get this name, you can see this is a slash and this is a dot. So in the substring, I am just watching the last index of slash. So there can be as many as slashes, but we need only the last index of slash. So this will return its index plus one. So as to if, if you, we just use the path dot last index of, so this will return somewhere somewhere here. So I am just adding a plus one to its position so that we move on to here, right here. So I have reached to this position and then I'm using another parameter, pass dot last index of dot. There can be a dots elsewhere, but this should be the last. So its index is returned somewhere here. So I have an index here and another one here. So the substring method will extract only this, given the two indices, this and so this is how I extracted the file name and then passed on to the array list. So I think uh, here I have used some bad practices as uh, many Android developers use. So what I should have used here, Android Studio is saying me string literal in set text cannot be translated. Use Android resources instead. So many times we get warning like this. So and we ignore this. But Android Studio provides us an elegant way. So what we need to do here, we don't need to go to strings and uh, add the string there. We just need to click here and press Alt plus N. So for now, it is giving just an press method, which is uh, not uh, our desired one. But most of the times, it gives you direct way, automatically. Let me see. I think I have also used bad practice specifically here. The activity name or content name. I think, yes. So margin left. Here it is saying that I should add margin start attribute as well. So I, what I think I should do, I add margin start and specify it to the value. No, I don't need to do this. I am just erasing that. Just with the direct method. Here, I am just pressing Alt plus Enter. And it is directly giving me the option. Okay. Yes. Boom. It is being added. Again here, Alt plus Enter. And add it again. Yes. So this is a shortcut. Usually, I also never knew these shortcuts long ago. So as I did more and more programming and read some more blogs, I came to know about these. So these are some nifty tricks which also boosts up your development time. Also, as I think I'm just I think I should raise this and many of times we just use direct things here. Like hello, this is it.
each and every Android developer, I think, should agree that they have many attempts used. So now it is saying that use Spring Resource. Oh yeah, this might seem boring, and, and put that there and link that here. No, no need to do that. Just press Alt plus Enter again. It is saying extract string resource. So I can name it something uh, like uh, hello. Okay, I set it to hello and I press OK. That string is automatically added to strings.xml and automatically linked. See how efficient this is. So yeah, we need to know these kind of tricks which uh, Android Studio provides us with. So this was uh, something I would like to share. So coming back here. So let us talk about Shortcut Manager API. It was uh, introduced uh, in Android Oreo. So this is the method add shortcut in Oreo. So what it is going on? See, this is to be honest. These are the comments which I have written here uh, just before this presentation. Uh, actually, we need to document our code so well that after we open that, after some days, we get to know what we had written. I had even forgot why, what, and why I had wrote this piece of code. So yeah, documentation is very, very important. And uh, only because of this presentation, I just did uh, some documentation here. So that is what is it is going on. So this makes sure this the Android version is for you. So here I am getting an instance of shortcut manager class. Shortcut manager class helps us in specific shortcuts to home screen as well as long press shortcuts. Don't worry, I will get uh, back to that point. So for now, we are seeing just how these shortcuts are pinned here. Yes, this is uh, done by the shortcut manager API. So this is getting an instance of the service from Android. So as you can see, if I open the app, it's asking for two icons. So this piece of code just check which icon is to be pinned. So this is just simple logic. Now, to create a shortcut, we need to create a shortcut info object. I I have created this and named it shortcut. And I'm using the builder class and passing in the context and PDF name. So what is the PDF name? It is being passed. The PDF name for here is this abstract algebra and it's number 70. So I'm setting a short label, I'm setting a long label. So Android automatically adjusts according to the available space, uh, how to set the short label or long label. And I am setting the appropriate icon. So icon is this image. It automatically decides which button, the blue or red, according to the process. And then I am setting the input. So what the intent does, I think this the above, above code is pretty simple. Just short label, uh, which you can see here, short label, this. And uh, otherwise, if there were more space in the launcher, it would use uh, the long label. So the intent, intent is the main thing here, the key thing here. So when I press this, this tells Android to open the PDF. So how it does? That's the intent to PDF. As you can see, I have defined it as PDF intent. So PDF intent is using an action view. Action view tells Android that a file is to be viewed. And the data type at to this URI from file and I pass the parameter file. This will give the actual path to Android where to open the file. Go to this folder and open that file. And what should be the type? PDF. If I don't specify this, Android will ask for an app to be opened. It will give you an option like camera or different kind of apps which can open any file. But we are becoming specific here. So I need to open only PDF file. So I have specified it here. So this piece of code specifies the data and its type. So this is the data which is to be opened, the path of the PDF file. And what is the type of the file? It is a PDF. So 
it will open the PDF file. So I have set the intent and then I just build it. So this is how we create a shortcut. Now we are asking Android to pin this. So how do we pin? We pin using shortcut manager, which is the instance of our, of our class. Yep, we defined it and we request it to pin the shortcut. I am just passing my shortcut here and due to my bad habit I forgot what the null value was and why I did pass that but don't worry this is as I can see by pressing control plus space this is intent center so result intent I don't want any result intent so that should be null so this requests the android to pin the shortcut here you can see a warning. Method invocation may produce null pointer exception. Oh, so wow, the null pointer exception is back here. So I don't need to write some safety code as Android Studio can automatically do that for me. I just press Alt plus Enter and it is giving me suggestions. I can use assert statement which is particularly used in Java and I don't think I need to use that. And this one is uh, attracting me. If shortcut manager is not equal to null, yes. I could have write the code, but I didn't need to, as Android handles that for me. And now no more warnings. So yeah, that life. So this was the shortcut manager class. Another thing which was introduced in Android Nougat, I would like to tell you all. Like, that was and long pressing the PDF finger icon. With the PDF finger icon. I am pressing it, long pressing it, and I can see an option. It is this is shoulder. So this is just not in Android Nogan. I when I press that, what happens? But it is automatically free. So yeah, that would be shortcut. Why I needed that see? and then click the three files. This is the three steps to show the name. We can directly use this code. Press and hold and then click the file. Because of that, then the three steps is now converted back into one step. Here it is. We can click the and we can directly see how to use that. I will go oh, pass. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Mahima is saying that there is a background noise a bit. So, can you click? Uh, yes, we were actually, I think it was uh, from on your end. I tried to contact you, and now it is okay. Now it should be okay. Okay, fine. Mahima can confirm you. Yeah, please resume. We just talked about just in case if anyone didn't hear i'm just talking about this shortcut as this is making our life easier by converting two step process into just one step process so how i'm doing this this piece of code works okay i have documented it well as you can see here i have put the commands only for this presentation i don't usually do this and this is a really really bad practice Yes, I'm telling that this is really, really, really bad practice. We should always use commands as these help us after some time to know what we did. So quickly getting back So this method. This will be called in on create, so I'm not going there. So let us see. The first step here is if it is no good. So this tells, this checks if it is a no good. So the API level greater than 24 is no get or greater than that. So again, I am using the instance of shortcut manager service using the get system service method. And just in case anyone wants to know, we use the get system service method to obtain many services like notification service here or maybe alarm service and many types of system services. So yeah, so we have the instance here. So now we are using intent. So again, I'm creating an intent here. So 
intent should be the action mean and uh, why i have used the action mean here uh, because we need to go directly into the activity and the i have passed another sum of parameters i think i recently disabled the helping tool tips so no issues with that i think let us see what we are doing we are just setting a new intent and using the flag flag activity clear task see this flag is not much important but it tells android to clear any activity if it was opened back so it creates a fresh new activity after that and we are using a put extra method to put shortcut key and shortcut value see here uh, again i want to refer to the best practices here sometimes we use like intent dot put extra key let us hello and the value should be like world okay so this is really a bad practice and doesn't tell what is hello actually this does tell this tells that this is a key so after some time if you read that so you will get to know that this is a key and this is a value so never use this always create always create let me get to the top always create public static final values like i have used here so and then refer back to there as i have here so i can see this this extra will be later used to check if there exists a shortcut or no so in this intent i am just passing some key and some value this this can be any value this will be later checked if the shortcut is pinned or not and may help this is absolutely optional now but good if we can use that so again we are creating a shortcut see again we are using shortcut manager class to get the instance we are using again the shortcut info object and we are passing here you can see the context and shortcut id so shortcut id can be anything we, i'm just press and hold the control control button and here i can see the value of public static final string shortcut id is equal to id1 so yeah it can be anything it can be parse it can be rest can be anything but for this particular the shortcut i am using this id so i am pressing sorry i am using the set short label method to choose file so just see here if i don't want to use this hard coded values here i can just uh, sorry click here and uh, use the refactor and then go to extract and constant okay constant i can choose here choose files and name it something label constant suppose this is only the one instance of that suppose there are 10 or more instances so if you don't need to replace them one by one you just use android studio to automatically replace the all the occurrences so again to read this i am pressing and holding the control button and here i can see the value of label constant to choose files so this is the name which is getting visible here choose files again i am setting some icon from the resources here you can see choose files and this is the icon visible here so yeah and then i am setting the intent so intent describes what will happen when we click that what will actually happen uh, when we click the button so i am passing on here the main intent of ours so i think i have used somewhere else uh, the intent should open yes 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 okay got it sorry for the time i have described somewhere above yes see shortcut key and shortcut value are used here which is being passed in the intent here so don't focus on what is the intent or what it does here see this put extra we will use again it in that to so i am just building an intent here sorry building the shortcut by an intent and then asking the shortcut manager service to set the dynamic shortcuts which accepts a list 
so i'm just getting back to this point again let me get back to the own create so whenever we click that shortcut our main activity class will be invoked so after that see here in the own create check if the app is opened using long press shortcut menu so what it does it will check intent intent equal get intent which will get any intent if the activity is directly opened without the shortcut it will be null otherwise it won't be null and we can get the extras see the extras had been passed back so this is the shortcut key and this is the shortcut value if we are checking that the past extra key is the same as shortcut key and its value is the shortcut value constant which is yes so what android should do then executes this function i make it specific choose button dot call on click so what it is going here going on here i am just pressing it and the intent is being launched and this piece of code is being ex executed what it does this only does this first the activity is opened like this then this is the choose button this is the name of choose files button the name is choose button and i am using the call on click method here so call on click method just press this for us otherwise user can also uh, click that but we are automatically doing this task so this is what is going on here so this piece of code is very important it, it checks if the shortcut is pressed or not and getting back here if we see this piece of code so i am just writing it again shortcut manager dot set dynamic shortcuts yes so see it is accepting a list a list but we only have a one shortcut for now so we will use collections framework collections framework so singleton list singleton list is used to contain only one object so this this is how i used so this will give android the task to pin our shortcut which we defined here in the long press menu so yeah i think it should be clear now so overall this is what main this project does so i am really happy that this app is doing well on play store and uh, there is lots of code mainly logic code uh, setting adapter of recycler view and so on so just like we see we just uh, saw that third step to extract path and name of files so we just we just did that so the fourth step was to pin the files from recycle review is data which we saw in the add shortcut in or you function so yeah so in the last slide we can see that we just learned this for android 8 and above we use shortcut manager api so if the android is not oreo and below that we use intents to pin the shortcut to home screen so here you can see a simple code this will run only on nougat and below so this only does create in an intent and set the same method we just did that back set it to pdf and this is the main thing this tells android to pin this shortcut to the home screen but i recommend to go over or you as this provides specific api for the use and uh, this is the future i should say so yeah try to use this we don't go over details right here as uh, it's also a lot of time now so yeah this doesn't do much just put extra like name of shortcut icon of shortcut and then just set up the action so yeah this was pretty much this so i think i should go over to any questions if any we both So guys, uh, this was the session from Paris. Uh, 
for us uh, please can you please uh, to an end uh, yes i think i should add it from my side yeah okay. so uh, guys if you have any queries so we have uh, like around 10 minutes time left in the session so please uh, respond with your queries on the live chat or if there are not any queries so we can uh, i will uh, be posting our slack ids here so you can uh, always dm me or paras and i just hope that uh, this session was uh, informative for you guys so paras can you please uh, take in for one second and uh, give the outro to uh, sorry i could not hear you can you please take in to, for the outro uh, yeah yeah so Wait, uh, you, thank you guys for uh, joining in and thank you very much uh, vibor uh, for organizing this and uh, i think uh, your sir maybe your sir is on the live stream as well but vant uh, saran sir he is watching so <laughs> yeah okay 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 so yeah thank you really thank you everyone for watching this uh, yes this might not be uh, a perfect session i might have made some mistakes um, but uh, also as we go along this journey we do more and more sessions and i hope i can uh, take some more session in less time yes i might have uh, took some more amount of time so yeah we can i definitely improve in the future um, sessions so thank you very much so just handing over to vibor so guys if you uh, have any queries feel free to post uh, me or uh, paras so that's it thank you for joining us we'll see you in the, the next uh, session by that okay fine